sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean, to... Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Michael uh, Corleone. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, in each two a multiplied by the inversion of age has to come out less than expectation value of age, right? Uh, what am I missing here? Or do we take age's stamp of permitting a line up? But in that case, age... Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter. Very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification That's before Pop. Yeah, I mean, God. before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Corleone, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. So Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till nine. Nine at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before ten. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer, a soda. What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before eight, my pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest. Oh, let's start over. Force equals mass times acceleration, of course. That's new. Get up a minute. You again? Fine. Listen, we all keep secrets, but I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Hello? No solicitors! Multiplied by the inverse of AH to the A multiplied by the inverse of AI. Think H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A I O. Well, that post below that dude's like lit on every before. Over 
Mm, now of H. The whole thing is MH thing. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I. Oh. Brown Estate, Klondike 51038. We're gonna be the inverse. Inverse, inverse, inverse. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for, in more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you, and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! I got something on the connection. And what I know. No, 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 no. Not possible. No! Not sure what that... Now of H stand for... Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Ah, uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing! Emmett, uh, about Don't your... say it! One of the one-dimensional harmonic cost. Or do we take H to stand for the line up? I love my dad and grandpa, but I'm kind of happy I get my looks from mom. This notebook has all of Doc's plans for the flux capacitor and the DeLorean. I'd better make sure it never falls into the wrong hands. Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh, oh. Doc will want to hear this. Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh, oh. oh, let's start over. Four sequels. Do we take H to stand for the Hermitian line operator? Well, in that case, H to the... Oh, think, Emmett, think! Okay, H to the a how the hell do you... Fly by the inverse of A, H to the A, multiply by the inverse of A, I... Oh, oh. The A... Mm, now if H stands for... Okay. One dimensional harmonic oscillator, that... Doc will flip when he hears his own voice. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. 
The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Emmett, uh, about your... Don't say it. Now, if H stands for, will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Okay. He's the most learned, the just, incorruptible you... judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. About I don't say what the hell I'm supposed to do. The one-dimensional harmonic also. Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh. Or do we take H to stand for Hermitian line operator? H to the A. Oh, let's start. Force equals mass times acceleration, of course. That's Newton. But how many Newtons are required to maintain a constant mass of acceleration is reduced by the inverse of the derivative of the speed relative to the speed of light. Okay. Sub, like, I don't get how I can. Okay.
Not sure what that. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. For we were born only yesterday and know nothing, and our days on Earth are but a shadow. Actually, I will be born for about 40 years. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. <clears throat> okay. Hey, um, uh, never mind. Nice rack. Yeah, we got all kinds of the culinary enhancements back there. The kitchen's for management only, Rummy. Okay. when he hears his own voice. So, Doc, does right. this ring a bell? Oh, think, Jesus. Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. Uh, Good oh. grief! Is that me? I sound so young. I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine.
I don't even know where the hell I'm supposed to go. I better tell young Doc the solution to that formula before I forget it. Just give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Corleone. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott! If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A. <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Well, it's like this. If you know about my rocket power drill, then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office! I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Now that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> That's fully operational. Whoa. Tonight. Whoa. Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? I've got a subpoena my grandpa. <gasps> it's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. The real Joshy Poo is here now. <laughs> Yo, I remember the first time I didn't know that Jess had a freaking clean and I get on Tiny Chat and I see somebody like on the laptop or and moving across. I'm like, Yo, what the fuck? Something wrong with that? Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Corleone. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. What's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup that deliveries. Is the that is the life. Yo, I regret leaving all my windows open all night and all day when I wasn't home. Cross your arms, bow your head, and let it do the dance like this. Hey, close that bitch, Josh, who's only on a mic right now. Hey, Josh. 
Fuck you, whole thought. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit. Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls, or so on. Yeah, I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. I can help you deliver soup, but I don't need a lot of time to charities. Oh? Which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, uh, yes. The Italians do so many good wow. ones. Wow. The Mario you Brothers, though? just fix it so, so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold wow. your horses, let's not get over eager. I'd... I'd... That's totally not real. Really. cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But, if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah. I'm gonna take my sweet time through these, which is suits. horrible. I need to get through it. As a matter of fact, I do know a local charity that's running low on soup. Oh, who? The orphanage. My, how those little ragamuffins can eat. Wow. Right, Edna? Mm -hmm. Just think of all those poor unfortunates and hold your nose. Mr. Donnelly! the escape plan. The younger self needs 190 proof booze to fuel his rocket drill. Well, that could be a problem. I know, we're both underage. Underage, nothing. It's 1931 and alcohol's been outlawed throughout the country. Are you sure you're about to graduate from high school? I'm kidding, Doc. It was a joke. A joke? If I live to be a hundred, and I almost have, I'll never understand a teenage compunction to make a joke out of everything. been all this time. I missed you. I've missed you too, Marty. But I Aww. thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while, free from the insanity of time travel. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Besides, I've been busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. So how are Clara and the kids? They're fine, fine. Right now we're trying to decide where to send Jules and Vern to college. Claire uh, prefers the 2020s, but I'm partial to the 1960s. We're planning on visiting you and Jennifer in 2011 soon. Me and Jennifer? In 2011? Oh, forget I said anything. Where'd the DeLorean come from? The last time I saw it had been smashed to pieces by a train. It's a fantastic story. 
Do you remember when the DeLorean got struck by lightning in 1955? Yeah. Unbeknownst to either of us, the lightning produced a temporal duplicate of the time machine, one that was tossed 70 years <laughs> into the future. What? <laughs> we found out about it a trip to 2025. We covered it just in time to stop this time the time stream. Emmy, so that DeLorean... It's for all intents and purposes the exact same machine as the original. Plus or minus little bells and whistles I've added over the years, of course. So, what were you doing in 1931 anyway? Nothing terribly exciting. Indulging in a little personal nostalgia, picking up a few rare out-of-print books to surprise Clara on her birthday, solving a historical mystery or two. The usual. The usual? You lead a pretty unusual life, Doc. It's an unusual universe, Marty. Your last time departed display is on the fritz. It is? So how did you find me? I found one of Edna Strickland's shoes in the DeLorean. How did one of her shoes get in the DeLorean? Einstein took it from her. He did? How strange. Heidi almost never attacks people. Not without a good reason, anyway. How'd you wind up in jail in 1931, anyway? During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. I thought I was safely hidden across the street. But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a stray brick. When I woke up, I was here in jail, charged with arson. It's horrible. I know. Worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. So I bumped into at the soup kitchen. My grandfather. No. Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good. I wish I could though. This air is tan and is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kitan's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. 
Right, Sylvia. What's the story with this kid Tannen jerk anyway? Biff's father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. No kidding. What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized. So they got a fried. She was a few years older than me, and we So they got a fried peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I wanna get that shit because that shit sounds really game which I wanna eat that shit. That shit gets the shit. The motherfucker, I wanna eat the peanut butter and jelly and make that shit. She believes that the such a love would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up. After that, season. probably. She after just that was lost dead. her mind. But dude, fried peanut Boy, butter and jelly sandwich. That sounds fucking bomb, though. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Fried peanut butter balls with marshmallows, bro. I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's not all your stuff. I that. That's what I keep trying to tell him. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986, after we saved me from a grisly death in 1931. So fucking hot. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. I'm just gonna lay in bed and fucking... I'm gonna sleep butt naked. Look at Josh's face. It's my last year. His face is like, really? Did I just hear what the fuck I just heard? Like, fuck out of here. I'm gonna sleep bug naked. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of the uh, soup. Soup? Soup? Uh, I need another Vienna sausage. That bourbon barbecue Vienna sausage life dope.
Take the Vienna sausage. So food. I need my own cans of food soon too, man. Yeah. Turn on the All I had today was fucking two bags of popcorn and then I went to sleep and woke up. I want some like country fried steak. That sounds alright. Yeah, but you know what though? I gotta always get it without the sausage gravy because that shit be nasty as fuck. I'll put that sausage gravy straight up in a body bag. I love that shit. Yo, Josh, you ever actually cook for yourself or no? Not really. What? I, I, I said not really. I cook. Can you sell some pasta or like that? No. I need to learn how to do that though. That'd probably be helpful. Well, uh, this is the regular soup and this is the special soup. Right. Special. Hey, what are you doing? Spicing up the soup. It's my secret doing? recipe. Listen, this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right. Just try the soup. Well? Ah, I can see why you want to keep this a secret. <laughs> Just space. Not a good one. It's pretty, pretty, uh, unique. Like a unique type of bird. Yo, Mr. T passed away. Oh, man. Excuse me. Now. You talking to me? My life can't go on without Mr. T, man. Mind if I look around a bit? No. Uh, excuse me. Yeah? Can I have a bowl of soup? You're a soup kitchen. What do you think? Damn, Josh, eat the whole thing, don't you? Yeah, I drink the broth. Uh, what kind of soup is this? It tastes like... Scroll a ribolita? I was gonna say we've old cabbage. Everyone's a critic. Look, all I got to work with is this two-bit soup in a barrel insane. and spice rack that hadn't been restocked since the raped. Coolidge administration. <laughs> what do you think I should do to perk this slop up? Let's see. Have you tried? Salt? Salt? What do you think? It's too bland? Too mild? I didn't put too much pepper in it, did I? I just think it could use a little more salt. No accounting for taste these days. For management only, rummy. Yo, I was trying to figure out what the fuck was going on.
Looks like these pipes go into the basement. Miss Strickland, Just come for some more soup. You know, it's like, I, mean, I really think dumb. you're cute, you know even though Josh is cuter and I'll never admit it on here. Oh, no. If the phone is dependent on Mr. Tennant's overblown show of generosity. Is that a yes? Just give me the soup before I gag on the hypocrisy. I'll tell the boss you said hello. I'll just bet you will. Wait a minute. Huddle up, Emmett. Huddle? Just listen up for a second. All I am, all I need. All I need is bitches and bottles, bitches and bottles. It's not even my mom's or. It's, um, actually tailors. Emmett, I can't get into the door over there. Those tables are jamming it shut. The door? So your plan is to just waltz in there and take a barrel of alcohol? Uh, no, of course not. That would be stupid, right? I'll say. Still, I'd like to get that door open. I can't do anything from out here. Well, it's a simple matter of physics. A lever, some sort of stop. Let me see what I can come up with. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. I'm done. I'm done. I'm just not enjoying this game. So, bye-bye.